Happy 2023, everyone. It's a New Year's miracle. We've all made it to the new year. How about that? We're healthy. We're, oh, somewhat. Somewhat. We're, you know what? Honestly, dog, my body, <coughs> it's falling apart. Oh, you think so? <laughs> I think I've been working too hard, man. Um, Not me. Man, my sleep schedule is fucked right now. Um, my body is kind of a, my shoulders like tweaked um my eye i don't know if you noticed but it's a little swollen and red i don't know from like I oh had, yeah what's going on here i had some i thought I, thank god my eye was um like i wasn't sure if my eye was hurting because of something on the inside or on the outside and because every time i touched my left eyelid this it shit looks like it got bit by something yeah this shit hurt i didn't know what it was i was like oh shit i hope it's not my eye and then thank god last night after i i had like a little nap it was like swollen. I was like, oh, it's the outside. Thank goodness, right? It, it looks like it got bit by something or it's a sty in your eye. Uh, oh, my. Yes. I don't know why. And I eat some fries. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm kind of like, uh, just I'm feeling a little like I need a break. You oh, know? speaking of rhyming, this. so I was over at his place, right? And something <laughs> I listened to annoyed the shit out of me. It's those children rhymes that don't rhyme. Oh my God, I'm so glad you brought this up, dog. So yes. I, when you told me that, right, and I was listening to it, I went into a rabbit hole <laughs> of, of, of fighting these. It's not just that one. No. It's all of them. Dog. So, okay, if y'all don't know what we're talking about, now at my house is kind of a constant, you know, 90% of the time. There's like kid YouTube videos playing, all right? A lot of songs, a lot of companies that like do exclusively baby toddler songs, right? And I noticed early on that a lot of them do not put effort at all into the, like, writing of the lyrics. It'll be like, uh, okay, now it's time to brush our teeth. Let's make sure our teeth are nice. And I'm like, what? what? Bro, that shit hurts me so bad. It kills me. <laughs> It's like it doesn't even take much effort Dog. to make that shit rhyme, dude. Fucking the biggest culprit <laughs> is uh, Coco Melon, okay? Coco Melon, they millions and trillions of views. Uh, the animation is great. Colors are popping. The animation, the little babies look cool or whatever, but they do that so often, dog. Like fucking no effort, you know? Let's see. Um, 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 okay, let's see. This is the way we wash our hands, wash our hands, wash our hands. This is the way we wash our hands. Let's get them clean. <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait. And then it'll be like, this is the way we wash our hands, wash our hands, wash our hands. This is the way we wash our hands. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's like it's making me hold in a sneeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what it feels like every time, dude. It's such a, like a cock tease, dog. Mm -hmm. It's like, ugh. We should all have some fun. <laughs> Everybody play trees. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it, it really is I like. I hate you it's, so much. It's drawing. You know what I'm saying? It's really jarring. Ugh, bugs the shit out of me, What bro. the fuck is that about? I don't know, man. I think they just think like, oh, okay, we're making content for babies. Who cares, right? No, but they need to learn how to rhyme because they're all going to be battle rappers. And <laughs> if you can't get that part down, how are they going to battle rap? Bro, Veda's getting so good with like colors and numbers. Um, the other day, randomly, she was like looking at the Christmas tree. And up until that point, she'd only counted up to as far as like, you know, she'd be like, one, two, three, huh? And like five was like maybe the highest she got. It was like a month ago. And then she was on the tree and me and she were just kind of chilling. And we heard her go, one, two, three, huh, five, six. And we went, what? And then she went, seven, eight, nine, ten. And me and she were like, oh my God. <laughs> we were like fucking going, wow, who taught her this shit? You know? See, that's like that weird toss up. Where yeah, I was talking to him about this, where 
the biggest conversation that I have with my uh, friends who have kids is their constant battle of, do I show them this iPad or TV? Or <laughs> right. everybody is literally every parent. That's what they talk to me mm. about. And now I'm thinking about because I didn't think about shit like that, yeah. right? Because and then I asked a, a, a friend of mine who's a child who's like a child therapist and stuff, mm. and she was saying like typically what she would suggest is to not show them that stuff as a way to stimulate them until they're two. I'm like, two? two? <laughs> <laughs> That's so long. <laughs> That's so long. Hey, man, look. I did not want to be a baby at the table with an iPad parent, but sometimes you got to do it, man. And look, for what it's worth, Veda is going to be two in a couple in February. And that little girl has learned so much from these videos, dog. Like, she knows her colors. I'm like, Veda, what color is this? She go, yellow. Yeah. Yellow, blue, blue. Like, from Blue's Clues shit, from, like, all these random videos that pop up. She's learned a lot of shit. So <laughs> the funny thing is, like, I asked her this question. She looked at me like I was hella dumb. I was like, yeah. And that's what I mentioned. I was like, but there's a lot of educational shit where they could watch and learn. She goes, or you could be a parent and teach them yourself. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Okay, I, I see what you're saying here. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. I'm like, oh, maybe we, maybe because we're so technologically like addicted to, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, is that, man, are we fucking up or like, what the fuck? I mean, not, I mean, I do like, I try to have a balance because I'm not going to lie, you know, it has gotten to a point where Veda is definitely, if it was up to her, she'd be on the iPad all day. Yeah. You yeah. know, she's like kind of obsessed with it, right? Um, but, if we can hide the iPads and and get her to play with some other shit, you know, she's also down for it. So I try to keep it balanced, man. But it can be difficult sometimes, especially when she is like, she's so pregnant right now. She's tired. Sometimes I got to, you know, go do this shit. So she's like, honestly, babe, not going to lie. Veda had a lot of screen time today. I just couldn't do it, right? I'm like, hey, all good. We'll balance it out, right? We'll take her somewhere tomorrow, make her run around, play some games or whatever. But sometimes you just need to, man. Yeah, that's why, like, I, I definitely feel that our the previous generation before, like raising a kid must have been way harder because how dog, that's what I'm saying. Like we have like these things that automatically rock the baby. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like our parents had like the towel around our back to carry us around. Mm -hmm. Like there's all these like weird technological advancement that help. Now it's like us to figure out, okay, is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? Mm -hmm. And we're in that generation where we got to figure it out for the next one. Yeah, man. This is a weird space to be in. It's man. a lot, bro. You know? And I'm like, and, you know, like sometimes we'll go on car rides and we have a thing that like, you know, you can insert your phone so Veda can just like watch whatever video while she's in her car seat. And sometimes I'm like, all right, you know what? Take this out. I'm gonna just let her look out the window, enjoy the surroundings. And she'll do that for maybe half the trip. And then she starts to get real antsy. I'm like, okay, okay, Blippi, here you go. Blippi, watch Blippi pay with some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, you gotta find the balance. It's hard. And I think like sometimes too, when I remember my parents, or I remember other parents at that time, they were like, oh, what do you do if you want to go have a nice dinner? They just didn't have a nice dinner. <sighs> they stayed at home. Or they, grandma and grandpa watched the kid and they went out. So right. there was no idea of having our cake and eating it too. It was right. like, if I'm a family person, we're not going to go out because I know that if we go out, this is going to be all crazy. Mm -hmm. So, because you would bring toys with them and they would play with toys at the table. They're throwing, throwing it on everything, the floor. Yeah. Oh my God, you know? People know better, man. They know I'm not I'm not going out nowadays mm -hmm. unless uh, I'm getting paid or unless, you know, you let me know a fucking month ahead of time so I can prepare, so I can let Chia know, um, unless there's a reason for me. You know, otherwise, look, I'm home helping her with the baby. It's just a lot. That's why, like, when I when I see my friends with kids and they're like, oh, let's kick it. I was like, we just go to your house, man. I'll bring yeah. some food over and then we'll just kick it and chill. Yeah. Because, like, when I see, like, let's say you, you guys got to bring the stroller out, this <laughs> stuff. I'm like, fuck it. We'll just go <laughs> to your place. <laughs> right. And then we'll just chop it up, have fun here, and then we'll just call it a day. It's whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless you guys really want to go out. You know, because even with Ant, Ant had two kids. And mm -hmm. I remember I just would go to his place. I'm like, I would bring food over. Yeah. And we would just chill there because it's just such an ordeal. Yeah, man. Yeah. And look, oh, bruh, I've never felt so daddy. Oh, well, before we get into that, would you like some champagne? Because it's 2023. Dude, 2023 is happening. I'm going to look like an Adonis. <laughs> <laughs> you already do. Listen. Buddha. Okay. You look like a god. You were built like Buddha. <laughs> Well, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know any other fucking deities that look like you. All right. You are Thanos. <laughs> I don't know. 
Um, would you like some champagne? I would love some champagne. Does this, did this year go by fast or am I tripping? As we get older, the year goes faster and faster, man. And I, I think my next year goals is to make sure I dedicate life to like myself next year, mm. right? Because I don't think I'm a selfish person in the sense of, I think sometimes I'm a little too carefree. Okay. You, you know what I mean? Like I don't really like focus on the goal and the task at hand. Mm. I just go, oh, I'm just going to do stuff and see what happens. And yeah. I've been doing that for the past like 10 years. It's been doing it pretty successfully. <laughs> right. You know, but now it's like, let's give yourself a chance and actually focus. Mm. Let's see what you can do. And I've, I've had those moments, right? That's when I was booking, making movies or whatever. Mm. But I think I, I, I need to learn how to balance that out because I can't always just like go ham 24-7 and then burn out for like two years. Yeah, I um. You know, I feel that I, I honestly, for me, uh, cheers, cheers to you, my guy. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, bro. And a mm -hmm. Merry Christmas. For me, I would really like to be more, um, you know, because I, I, I like working, I like staying busy. Um, one thing the baby is gonna force me to do, and the babies now. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I need to. Um, Manage my time way better. Yes, I've never like had a like a schedule for my creativity since like school, probably right, like college and shit. I never. Yeah, so I um, if I really want to finish these projects that I've been saying I've been trying to finish for years, like the album and writing this movie for us, I need to be like, if I'm put the baby down at seven, I need to shower immediately, be ready for bed at eight, and fucking dedicate eight to ten for just writing. You know what I'm saying? I need to fucking sit my ass down, turn off all social media and actually like focus, be like, I'm going to write this many pages today or I'm going to write this many bars today and stick to it or else the shit's never going to get done. You know done. why I'm laughing right now? <laughs> because this is a great segue to you finding out you have ADHD. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> this... <laughs> this story is so fucking funny just because how he was diagnosed and how ridiculous it is. Like, like this, this doctor didn't need to assess shit. <laughs> All right. So if y'all watch No Chaser, we already talked about this on No Chaser, but I haven't talked to David about this specifically. So uh, oh, here's, here's, I don't know if you want some of this still. But. Oh, yeah. So, um, yes. So here's the story. Um. You know, I, I made a consultation. I had a consultation to f figure out if I actually have ADHD. And um, so for one, you know, you answer a question. And we talked about this on the last episode of Sand Foods. You answer a questionnaire and then you sit down with this woman, right? So I'm sitting down with her and I didn't want her to feel like immediately like I had ADHD because I'm kind of, I already have trouble focusing when I'm on, when I'm Zooming with somebody. I'm always like trying to like, clean shit or like I'm doing shit right I'm, I try to put my phone down but I do get very like you know I can't focus so I put the fucking computer mouse on her nose and I stared at the little arrow on her nose for the whole call so she wouldn't be like a part of me feels like oh she does it so much maybe someone just being jittery just to be like hey I have ADHD right so I'm like staring at her I'm like no nah, I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna I'm gonna focus right so she asked me in the beginning of the call do you ever have trouble like um Sitting still? I'm like, uh, sometimes. But what makes you think that? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm so calm. I'm like, uh, sometimes. Not really. And then so, like, do the call. She's like, yeah, you know what? Just, I'm already kind of, I'm noticing you just kind of like fidgeting a bit. Like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you, probably, you have a little trouble sitting still. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I was like, not going to lie. I'm concentrating so hard right now on just focusing on you. And she's like, oh, okay. Well, you're in the right place, my friend. And then... Not even to be funny, dog, but like halfway through the call, she said she said something and she was explaining something to me. I'm like, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, well, this was supposed to be a half an hour. Uh, we only need the first two minutes. And the funny shit now is from that point on when she kind of decided like, OK, yes, you definitely have ADHD. Then she would do this. We'd be talking. She's like. Okay, we're almost done. Stay with me. <laughs> stay, stay with me. We're, we're, we're so close. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, yes, got it. Yes, okay. What do you got? No. <coughs> when you told me that shit, that shit scared me because that's how all my conversations are. Mm -hmm. Where it happened to me the other day when Mary and I were getting brunch and she was talking and I was telling you, her about what you went through. She's like, you got that shit. <laughs> and she's literally telling me about her day. And then as she's telling me about her day, she said my fucking gaze started going <laughs> off to the side. And then she goes, what are you thinking about right now? And I'm like, 
what do you, I was listening. She goes, no, you weren't. I'm like, I'll be honest with you. I didn't hear anything you said. And then you said something that triggered another thought. And I started thinking of another scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I, when I came back, she was talking for like two minutes and I don't know what happened in between. <laughs> I was like, does that happen all the time to me? And I started noticing it happens all the time. Yeah. I'll hear a trigger word and I'm like, oh. I remember that one time. <laughs> yeah, and so apparently, like, she played me a video, and apparently, you know, people with ADHD, ADHD, um, they do tend to do well in the entertainment business because you know you you you're able to your, your brain does so many things, and also like you tend to be good at a lot of shit because you know you you want to try doing a lot of shit, right? Um, but you know, yeah, it was like, do you start projects and not finish them? Do you have problems focusing when people are talking to you? And like everything was very, you know, like yes. Uh, and um, she just explained a lot of shit to me that was like making a lot of sense. And she said, so she said I had something called like ADHD combined. I guess there's like different kinds, right? And she said I had something ADHD like inattent, no, no, uh, uh, impulsive and also ADHD inattentive, which is what they're calling ADD now. Mm. So um, I'm going to get a second opinion just to make sure, you know what I'm saying? She is like, hey, make sure you get a second opinion before you go popping riddle in or whatever. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to talk to someone else just to double confirm. And then I'll and I'll see from that point on if I actually want to, you know, take some type of meds to, I don't know, help me focus or whatever, you know. So my lady has a friend mm -hmm. who got diagnosed with um, ADHD mm -hmm. and hers was pretty severe. Mm -hmm. um, and not Obviously not severe like you're going to die or anything, right. but – she started taking a low dose of Ritalin, mm -hmm. blast through her work now. Really? Because she's in production. And yeah. then she would just be like, okay, just all over the place. Yeah. And she works with her because mm -hmm. um, they'll, they'll work from home, but they'll work together at the house because, you know, they hate working by themselves. Mm -hmm. And she says that she'll be there focused for like seven hours Man. and get her shit done. But she only takes it when she when works. When she needs to work. Yes. Which That's is it. exactly what this woman told me. She was like, I'm going to prescribe you a very low dosage of Ritalin. She's like, only take as you need to. Like, if you're chilling or if you're on vacation, like, there's, there's no need for that. Um, and just see how it makes you feel. And we'll go from there. And, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm you know, curious to see how it affects I me. literally told this fool. <laughs> it was like, if he takes this shit and he stops being funny, I'm throwing that shit in the trash. Oh, if I take that shit and it makes me not funny, oh, bruh. Chia's going to have to deal with me forgetting to flush my shits, dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, baby. I'm going to forget to flush the poop sometimes because I will be Tim and I'm not going to change, all right? Yeah, that starts. It's like my friend who goes through therapy and he's a changed man. I'm like, stop going to therapy. You were way funnier. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, too. I kind of like that, like, you know, when I'm having casual conversation with somebody. Yeah, sometimes I say some random shit that pops into my head. And I think I like that I communicate like that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it can get kind of all over the place. But then that's what makes this podcast great. We're going to take a break. <laughs> Monday nights are made for MTV's deliciousness. We're back! Join host Tiffany Thiessen and her panel of booties oh as they break down the biggest fails back to back. <laughs> go big or go home! MTV's deliciousness. It all starts tonight at 9. But yeah, man, we'll see. You know, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a second opinion. And uh, why'd you take Ritalin? And this food is this podcast is actually about food. <laughs> I'd be so upset. <laughs> I I start taking Ritalin, and I'm like, Hey, man, uh, reel it in, okay? Because we're talking about this, not that. I would walk out of this room immediately. <laughs> I'm like, Who the fuck is this? Like, Listen, we're gonna talk about sustainable farming and fishing today. <laughs> sustainable farming. <laughs> I was like, I'll fucking stab you right now, bro. I was like, What the? Did you say yeah. to me? Why do you have a box cutter? Oh, it's just a multi-tool. Mm. Bottle opener. I'm going to have to open up packages and shit. I just always have it on me. Well, um, 2023, man. Um, how was your 2022? You know, I feel like I wasted this year a okay. lot. Like, Was it a waste, though? It wasn't a waste. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. And I think that. I could have done a lot more, mm -hmm. but I chose not to. Yeah. So I'm I'm next year I'm trying to, like you're doing, set up certain schedules to do things. I spent most of this year unwinding mm -hmm. and doing a lot of fucking walks. Obviously, there was uh, no, that's not true. When I say unwinding, when people hear my actual schedule, it's a lot more than the average person. True. Right. But for what I'm capable uh. of in terms of like workload, I could have done more. Mm. 
So like if I tell somebody like, oh, so you were just chilling all day. It's like, no, I had, was opening a store in Waikiki. <laughs> I had the secret society thing. Right. I was, you know, still doing pot. Like that's a lot. I'm like, it is, but there was these pockets where I chose to just space out and do nothing. Yeah. And it didn't really help me mentally or anything. I just chose not to do something. I wouldn't call that a waste. Yeah, maybe it wasn't a waste. Maybe I'm a little hard on myself. Yeah, right? I mean, and that's that's just kind of uh, something we have inside us, I feel. And it's why we are able to continue working um, and continue to stay as busy as we do. You know, I think we just have it in us. Like, hey, if I'm not working, I feel like I'm, I'm being lazy. I'm wasting time. Yeah. But, you know, I think it's important to check yourself and be like, I need to relax a little bit for my own good. Or else you're just going to get into the fucking hamster wheel and then just get depressed. I just yeah. want to do too much shit, man. I, I want to do, do everything. I feel like before I die, I'll never get to do everything I want to do. Well, hopefully you don't die anytime soon. Uh, we'll see. I'll be eating this cheese and salami all day. You know, man, um, I, there was a thing I saw. Um, someone had posted on their story. It was like the top 10. It was like a top five regrets of like just old dudes that were like people on their deathbed. Um, and, and a couple of the top answers were like in their life, they wish they wouldn't have worked so much. They wish they would have spent that time with their families and enjoying their loved ones. Um, and that's something I try to always remind myself, you know what I'm saying? Cause you get into this mindset of, yes, I have to keep grinding. I have to stay working. I have to build more. And then I have to remind myself, what am I working for? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, what is the point if I don't stop to enjoy this shit? Fucking take a look around, count my blessings, you know? Because then it's like a waste. I mean, that's some shit that we think about when we're a lot older too because <clears throat> I think when you're younger, you need such like high stimulation yeah. that you think that those are the things <clears throat> that you're going to chase for the rest of your life. And the reason why like I want to have kids is because of the way that my mom kind of put it out. Mm -hmm. And obviously this isn't ring true for everybody. But for her, she says like some of the, she was like, I felt like you and your dad felt like you too. You know, she goes, but, I could only imagine what it's like when I'm 50 or 60 years old and I feel like I've done everything. And then the thing that I want to, it's a chapter of my life I always wanted, which is with the kid. She goes, when I'm 50 or 60, I've probably done everything I wanted to do. Mm. And then now that I have you, I have this second life, mm. you know, where I get to watch you grow. I get to watch you pursue your dreams, the things that I couldn't fulfill that you're fulfilling now. Mm. And, it, and it gives me a reason to live. Mm. So she goes, because after a certain point, you're not going to be able to go out and drink with everybody. Mm. You're not going to be able to kickbox because your body won't allow yourself to do it. Right. You know, how many more books are you going to read? How many of this? She goes like, it's different. You know, mm. I'm like, like I said, not everybody's going to agree with that. And that's perfectly fine. But for me, it resonated with me a lot where I'm like, oh, maybe that is that second chapter that I want, you know? Yeah, man. I think, you know, we're kind of ingrained, uh, like it's been ingrained in us to feel like, you got to work. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You got to stay working. You got to make that money. Maybe it's, you know, some people would argue that it's because we're child of ch children of immigrants and they had to constantly work just to fucking survive, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Ty smile, more like Ty frown. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't bring that up. That's a sore spot for my dad. Speaking of my dad. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of my dad. So my dad has been waiting so long for Veda to finally start like liking him. Because she got very weird. I mean, I want to say like six months to a year. She was very like skittish around my parents. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't really, you know, whenever they like my parents would try and hold her, she would cry, get weird. And now really for the first time, Veda like really likes my dad. You know what I'm saying? Like to the point where we were going on a walk the other day I was holding Veda and my dad was with me and she like reached out to my dad for him to hold her we we're walking through the mall and she's like running around but like would stop and be like yeah like for my dad to come and my dad's like <laughs> like out of breath <laughs> he's like okay I'm coming I'm coming I'm like hey man you gotta start doing some cardio or something bro because she finally likes you yeah exactly and okay so I don't know if you know this but um what we call my dad for Veda we call him poopy I'll tell you this Maybe. Because uh, grandpa in Thai for the dad side is uh, Kun Pu. So we shortened it to Pupi. Mm. So now, bro. That's cute. It's, su it's super cute, right? So, uh, and, and then grandma is Kun Ya. So my mom is Ya Ya. My dad is Pupi, right? So. And dad's like, I got the shit out of the stick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> so finally, dog. And first of all, I'm a, little, I'm a little hating on this because it took forever for Veda to be like, hey, Veda, who's this? Who am I? And she'd be like, dad, daddy, dad, dad, daddy, right? She knows who I am now. But she caught poopy fucking quick, dog. <laughs> I'll be like, yo, Veda, who's this? 
spooky. And my dad's like, yes. I'm like, what the fuck? How did you do that so yeah. fast? But so she likes him now, which is great. And um, and so I just need this fool to, you know, start start going for going for walks or something because he's getting out of breath, man. Hey, he might give him purpose. Exactly. You know? Yeah. That's crazy, man. Like, but you know, also Vader's too at that age where all the kids at this age right now, they're very more cognizant. Yeah. Now stranger danger's kicking in for them. So when they see somebody who's not familiar, mm-hmm. it takes forever for the warm-up. Like all the kids that l- used to light up when they saw me, <laughs> now because I haven't seen them in three, four months, they're uh, like, oh, who's this? Yeah. Like my buddy Vince, their kid Loke, the little nephew, sweet as shit, loved me. <laughs> I hadn't seen him in three, four months. He was so weird around me. Yeah. And it took like a couple days for him to kind of get used to me again. Right. Where he would let me hold him and want me to hold him. I'm like, that shit was hurting my feelings a little bit, dude. Ah, uh, yeah. I was like, motherfucker, you better hug me, dog. Oh, bro. It's so great because, um, so as I was about to say in the beginning of the episode, I had five days, you know this, of just me and Veda without mommy. Because Chia fucking randomly caught COVID out of nowhere. We have vile no- woman. <laughs> we have no idea where she got it from. Because first of all, Chia don't go nowhere. Exactly. So we were very confused. Um, I don't know if she went out and did some shenanigans while I was out the house. I don't know, but Chia don't go nowhere. And one day, I thought maybe she had the flu because she was kind of feeling some symptoms, you know, achy, snotty. And I was like, stay your ass in the room all day. I think you have the flu. We'll test you. Let, no, like, just stay in the house. Stay in your room, right? And I was prepared mentally. I'm going to take care of Veda for two days without Chia because the flu kind of goes hard for two days and then you're straight, right? So she came out of the ho- out of her room after I put Veda to sleep first night. She's like, should we test me for COVID? I'm like, mm, sure, whatever. <laughs> Tested her. And mind you, we're, we're, she's FaceTiming with her parents. I had her wearing a mask. And and then we saw the shit go two lines while she was on FaceTime with her parents. She was like, <gasps> her eyes got all big. I was like, oh, you shit. You got it. Wow. And mind you, bro, Chia hasn't caught COVID ever in like fucking three <clears throat> years. We thought she was immune or some shit. But and now I'm like, great. So now, you know, now the recommended quarantine is five days. Right. So I'm like. Chia went to bed back to her room and not going to lie, dog. I like stood there for a second. I was like, oh shit can I do this like fucking five days it's a lot you know what I'm saying but we kind of got into a little groove I was taking her places I was handling everything breakfast lunch dinner nap bath time changing fucking, diapers everything the I crying, mean crying the screaming the fighting well normally you know me and Chia kind of have like a routine we'll switch off you know Chia handles like post bath I handle bath Chia handles this I handle that but this time it was all me and not gonna lie, yeah, yeah, Veda gave me some, some, she hit me with a couple tantrums in public, you know? But uh, it was also great because I was expecting her to be so much more needy towards Chia. I thought she was gonna be calling out for mommy fucking every 10 seconds, but she wasn't. She was like, cool with me, called me, you know, was like, dad, dad, come, come here, come do this and that. We had like a really good time. And I like, I was like, oh my God, she really loves me. It was great. We bonded. You know what? Shout out to all the single parents out there. Oh, I don't yeah. know how the fuck y'all do it. Ah. Especially like the single parents without the grandparent help. Like the shit that you have to go through is unreal, man. It's and- so much. And not only that, dog, it um, I'm so behind on all my emails. I haven't put up a vlog in two weeks, which is crazy for me. During Vlogmas? Dog, during Vlogmas. I've missed out on two weeks. That's crazy. It That's- feels crazy. It's very unlike you. I know that. <laughs> it's it's so crazy. I'm so behind on emails. I've literally sent like five emails last night. Like, hey, I'd love to respond to this, but honestly, my wife had COVID and I've been with the baby for five days, giving them the whole sob story. We had like the worst timing ever. <clears throat> he got the flu, couldn't come in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> then my lady catches fucking COVID, yeah. and after that, fucking his lady catches COVID. I'm like, what <laughs> in the fuck? I thought I I joked with Chia. I was like, maybe you're getting COVID for uh, karma for making fun of Mario for catching COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm the last one. And all of a sudden, <laughs> dude, I have a homegirl. She's a stripper. And she literally like all throughout the pandemic, she's been traveling, partying, stripping still has not caught COVID. She's the source. <laughs> she's she's just asymptomatic, but she's the source of it all. Spreading it to everywhere around the whole world. You fucking COVID sexy girl. Did you want some more? Are you did you finish it? Do you want some more? Do you want really to turn up? Are you trying to get crazy? It's, it's 2023, dog. We're going to get our goals accomplished this year. It's going to happen. And I'm going to tell you all about this movie I'm writing for me and David after this break.
Yeah, uh, I I also taught during my five days with Veda. I taught her what butt means. We never we never till this point have ever told her what any of her like uh private parts have like been called or anything like you know she knows fucking eyes ears nose mouth chin neck shoulders hands all that shit but i was like oh god we never taught her any of the private parts so i'm like so now she knows butt I'm like veda where's your butt so I went to her butt and i'm like okay daddy's gotta change your diaper gotta wipe your chocha <laughs> <laughs> this baby so multilingual. <laughs> she don't know what's going. On. Well, here's the thing, right? I was like, I was like, shit. What's like a cute word for her cooch? And I've never, you know, like so in Thai for penis, there's so many cute words, right? And there's like chuchu is the word that you tell your uh, your little boy, like your chuchu is your penis. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know what the the Thai cute word is for cooch. So I was like, I gotta go with the Spanish one. I was like, I was like, yeah, okay, gonna gonna wipe your chocha. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> so she kind of knows what that means now. And I taught her chichis. Um, oh, she's learning all the important <laughs> words, dude. <laughs> Don't touch my chichis or my chocha. <laughs> this fool. So we call in Korean. There's a there's a term for what Tim is with with Veda. We call him a tal pabo. Tal pabo, which means a daughter idiot. <laughs> 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 so you are a tal pabo, daughter idiot. Daughter idiot means that it's like these. Guys who cannot say no to their daughter. This will text me. He's like, dude, she's like acting up. She wanted these gloves. She wanted to bring it to the bath. And I said, no, but I gave up. I said, go ahead. Because she was getting so she was getting so frustrated. She had these brand new, because she loves these little mittens that she bought, like these little purple gloves with hearts on them. And she fucking, she had them on her and I was taking her to the bath. And I'm like, all right, all right, baby, you got to take your gloves off. And she literally, like, as I was taking them, she like, I was at the bathtub. She turned around, threw them, fell on the floor of the bathtub. It was like, I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> so that's, it, it only took one. <laughs> it's like, she didn't do it multiple I, times. I it was, was like, I give up. It was, All right, Veda, no more. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> so now she's in the tub with these purple mittens, dog chilling. I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> Tal babo, dude. Tal babo. Yeah, that's what they call you, man. <laughs> Which is okay, man. I don't like this. I'm saying this is why I I cast no judgment because I don't know what it's like, and like I might be all talk saying like, okay, man, but you know what you gotta do. I don't have a fucking daughter. All right, if I did, watch tal babo. I'm <laughs> like, fine, go ahead, play with the gloves. We'll see what happens when um you know because I think the next one's gonna be a boy. We don't know, but I just feel boy vibes. Um, <laughs> he wants the gloves. I don't give a fuck. He's like, hey, 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 stop being a little bitch. <laughs> Take the gloves off <laughs> and fight me. <laughs> and fight me. <laughs> you get in your diapers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's even up the playing field, you little pussy. I got a diaper on now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, funny shit. So Rick would always call Veda uh, Dorothy. Mm-hmm. That was his nickname for her because, you know, Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. And so he would call her Dorothy. And then so I was talking about just something. And he was like, yeah, you better not fuck up because, look, you got to be here for, for Vader. No, he was like, you got to be here for Dorothy. And I, you know how I, I think the new one's going to be a boy. But he's like, I mean, I don't care about Barthy coming. <laughs> <laughs> but Dorothy, you better stick around for her. <laughs> oh, man, if it's a boy. Yeah. What are the names? Uh, I'm not at liberty to discuss. Oh. Chia wants us to keep it very classified. We have one, I'll tell you off camera, but we have one very like, this is the one if we're going to have a boy and we have like a list of names for a girl. Oh man, dude. So. You think it's a boy or a girl? I honestly have, I'm getting boy vibes. Like I've, I've, I don't know where, I've, I've said this before, I forget where, but you know, I thought I was going to have a squad of girls, you know what I'm saying? And because of like, people always joke about the player's curse or whatever, right? But a- after Veda, I'm like, I love being a girl dad. I'm like kind of hyped to have a bunch of girls if that's the situation. But one night I was just laying on the tummy and I was talking to the tummy and I was like, all right, baby girl. And I was like, mm, this doesn't feel right. I think this is a boy in here. Uh, and I, so from that point on, I've been talking to it like it's a boy. I'm like, what's up, little buddy? <laughs> What's good, homie? What's up, little homie? What you doing in there, little homie? <laughs> but I just, I think it's a boy. But also, look, not that I completely believe in horoscopes, but, you know, the due date is very similar, very close to your birthday. 
And so if this... I hope we share the same birthday. If this little thing is going to be in Aries like David So, maybe I'm just feeling very aggressive Aries <laughs> energy. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm so used to fucking uh, like... <laughs> Tim, the baby just told me to shut the fuck up. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> he just called me useless. <laughs> Maybe that's it, dude. Maybe I'm so used to very more like laid back energies that like now that I'm feeling this more aggressive like energy from this little Aries, I'm like, oh, this is a boy. You see this imprint of a middle finger? <laughs> oh my God. No, it just flops out of Chia's vagina one night. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Barfy one more time. Turns it around this way so she can see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? To Chia and me. Yeah. Right? My name isn't Barfy. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows, man? Like we, you know, like we, just like with Veda, we're going to wait until, you know, the baby comes flopping out. So we'll see. I never thought that I would ever see like my friends have a kid that I definitely for sure hate like <laughs> there's like this one kid that my friend has and I fucking hate that kid man like every time that kid comes around I'm like what the fuck is he doing here <laughs> like a grown ass man I'm like fuck out of here bro I hate her fucking kid man this kid's like such a fucking brat chill bro Taika's a nice kid oh no I love Taika I know I know everyone loves Taika <laughs> Taika is so he's like the classic Boy, yeah, boy, yeah, 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 yeah. I and mean, he's a little fucking nuts, but obviously Bart's nuts too. Yeah. So it's not like I don't expect it, mm. right? But dude, it's because like her, his, his mom is one of those like new age. Read something on a book, it applies it immediately. Parents, oh, I see. So I remember when I when we first saw this kid, like he's a kid, like mm. kid, kid, and then she would only dress him in monochrome stuff, and oh. I'm like, it's a kid, like Let him you know, be a like kid. even. Like doctors, like give show them colors, like show them like stimulation stuff. Right, Only right. black and white. And this kid looks like a serial killer now. <laughs> Just stares. He looks like an alien. <laughs> Is she gonna be upset at you for saying this? Uh huh. She don't fucking know. <laughs> you know why? Because it's her child. So to her, she thinks that her child's amazing. Okay. Right. But like she doesn't ever like reprimand her child either because mm. she doesn't believe in like telling her kid no at all. Really at all. So one time, like this kid never heard the word no, but this motherfucker was started a uh, drawing on our floor mm. at the house. Of your house? Yeah. Oh. I, and I was like, <laughs> she started drawing. He was like, oh, he's being creative. And I looked at her. I was like, he could be creative, not in my fucking house. <laughs> I was like, hey, stop drawing on my floor. And he was like shocked. And she goes, oh, I don't ever tell him he can't do anything. And I looked at her. I was like, I will tell you to get the fuck out. <laughs> I was like, tell your kid to stop drawing on my floor or you can get the fuck out. Yes, yeah, seriously. I never share this story. But if you hear this part, you know who the fuck you are. <laughs> I make fun of her all the time. It doesn't matter. Okay. But I was like, hey, I had to set boundaries. I was like, yeah. listen, you could do what you're parenting however the fuck you want, but this right. is my house. Motherfucker again just do putting a Sharpie on the floor. Where the fuck you get the Sharpie? Not in your house. Yeah. And that was the weird thing too where she was like, I had explained to her, I'm like, your style of parenting can't fuck with my life. Right. You know what I mean? You could do how – I'm not telling you how to be a parent. Yeah. But the motherfucker was drawing on my floor with the Sharpie and then you just laughed. Mm. So that's why I hate that kid. <laughs> and this motherfucker, he, I, I, she for reals doesn't tell the kid no. Wow. So when I told him you can't do he was like uh, – uh. He didn't know. Yeah, he didn't know. He's like – He just shit it on your floor. He just stopped and he just kept <laughs> you know, doing it a little more. <laughs> and I just grabbed the thing out. He started throwing a fit. I was like – Oh, my goodness. Looking at this kid like I don't care. I literally don't care. I'll sock you in your face, bro. Did you? What? Huh? No. And he and then he's like, guess what, mom? David well, so's full of shit. <laughs> he's on the Reddit threads. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't know how to deal with that situation either. And I just remember she was just laughing or whatever, thought it was really funny. I was mm. like, dude, this is chaos, man. Right, right, like, right. Like I said, nobody cares what you do in your house and however you do things, but you also got to teach a kid to respect somebody else's space. Yeah, I mean, like, your house is going to be a lot different than the rest of the world once he gets out into the rest of the world. And that's know? why this kid is fucking annoying as shit, man. <laughs> Don't ever bring your kid around my house again. Just give him a really aggressive noogie. Yeah, he's annoying as fuck, though, man. <laughs> this little kid, man. I just want to, ooh, you should do one of these where you just raise your fist. Like, ooh, motherfucker, I swear to God, man. I just want to sock you in your chest. Oh, man. We'll see, you know, um, Veda's getting so hyper. We'll see how she does as a big sister. Um, and I feel like I low-key, you know, it's kind of, this is completely new territory for me, right? Because I'm an only child. So I don't know how siblings work. I don't know how that shit works. Now, granted, you know, just the other day, she was looking at me, and she was like, it's actually so weird that, as somebody who has never really been around kids, because, you know, I was never someone who liked playing with babies. I never, like, really even gravitated towards kids like that. And she was like, it's so weird that you're such a good dad, right? Because I'm so, you know, I'm 
I'm always down for whatever shenanigans Veda wants to do. And I was like, babe, well, it helps that you're married to a big old man baby. <laughs> I know. First of all. We're on the same wavelength. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it's funny because people were like, oh, man, now, now you have an excuse to watch those Disney movies. I'm like, excuse? <laughs> the fuck are you talking about, dog? I'm pretty open about it. <laughs> I'm there fucking opening day, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's what people say. They go, oh, you're really good with kids. I'm like, no, that's because I'm just as dumb as them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, we, we have, we have the same interests. <laughs> People would be like, like, I think it was, some, it was some Disney movie coming out and they were like, oh yeah, you got to take blah, blah, blah. I'm like, uh, no, I'm leaving Veda at home so I can enjoy this Disney movie. Are you, are you kidding me? She's going to distract me from this Watching shit. Watching Moana. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, bro. That yeah. is my shit. So, I mean, it makes sense why I'm, I would be good with little kids because I, you know, I guess, you know, as they say, you're a little kid at heart, right? Um. But I, you know, I definitely, you know, going into it, I was kind of like, oh, shit. When will you let, uh, you and Chia let uh, Veda start dating? <laughs> well, I, I kind of would have to go back on my memories as a kid. Um, I had crushes and shit since, Early like, on. preschool, you know, um, where I was, like, bringing this girl a flower because I had a crush on her and shit like that, right? Um, as far as, like, legit dating, like, take her and her little boyfriend or girlfriend to the movies or the mall or whatever. I don't know. High school? 15, 16? If, she, if she's like, look, if she's like 15 and she's like, dad. Well, I'm doing the baby voice. <laughs> First of all, I don't know why at 15 she's still talking. <laughs> dad, hey, dad, dad. You have bigger problems. <laughs> I know. <laughs> dad, dad, I want movie boy. <laughs> I want movies with boy. <laughs> Purple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, 15 year old man, it kind of sounds dumb. He's like, poopy, where is this? Is he? Is he dead? No, uh, so. <laughs> but if Vader's like 15, <laughs> he wants to put it in my t- <laughs> Oh my god, no! <laughs> <laughs> no. If she's like 15 and she's like, Dad, can I like go to the movies with this guy? Like, you know, he's like, he, you know, he's like my boyfriend or whatever. I'm like, yeah, fine. I'll, I'll fucking, you know, I'll drive her to the movies. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not tripping like that. I'm not like, oh, you're, you gotta be 18. You know what I'm saying? Cause I remember back in the day, I had a girlfriend when I was 15, high school. My dad would take us to the mall. He would drop me off at her house. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and of course, yeah, freaky deaky things happen when I was 15, but I think that's kind of, a part of life. I here's what I want for Veda and and all my kids, and, and just I really want to make sure she never feels like she can't talk to me about something. You know what I'm saying? I want the communication to be completely open. Mm-hmm. Like I want her to fucking if she has questions about whatever to come to me if she needs fucking advice. I talked about this too, where you know I feel like a lot of uh, parents sometimes don't have an open communication with their kids because mm. they're so scared of getting in trouble. Mm. You know, so if they say how so, <clears throat> I think a lot of Asian parents do that a lot, where they'll say something about how they feel and they go, "Ugh, that's not important." You know, that doesn't matter. So they feel like they always have to lie to their parents. Oh, you mean the kids are scared of it feeling not important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they always have to feel like they lie because every time they talk about how they feel, they just go, oh, you're being dumb. Yeah. And so it kind of like fucks up that honesty thing. And sometimes, you know, parents will be like, I wish you were more honest with me. It's like, well, when they are, you always tell them to shut the fuck up. So how how does that really work? Yeah. So it kind of makes like lying the first option. You know what? I really want to, I need to work on this because even now, Veda... Being a little little baby, of course she tries over she cries over very trivial things, right? So I, I'm trying not to laugh because she'll be crying. I'm like, baby, please stop! No, please stop crying, right? It's, yeah. it's okay, it's okay. And I want to make sure I don't get into that habit, like like you said, when she has something she's really cares about, is concerned about, and I'm like, you just a baby. <laughs> <laughs> like, shut up, girl, please. You only thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to make sure I don't do that, you yeah. know. Even though, of course, yeah, that's how I feel. Being grown and looking back on it, you're like, the shit you cried about when you were thirteen is trivial, stupid shit, right? <gasps> but I don't want her to feel like. That's what's going to happen if she confides in me. Dog, I just remember like being heartbroken for the first time (laughs) and it just felt like a deep abyss. Like you will never, ever get out of it. I know. You don't want to eat. You don't want to do anything. Well, I ate. (laughs) I ate so much. Oh, I ate so much. (laughs) They're like, dude, I can't eat. I'm like, what do you mean? (laughs) I ate more (laughs) to fill the void. Damn. Yeah, but like if I go back in time and I think about, okay, damn, I remember when I first got dumped and I remember how 
terrible it felt. Like right. it literally felt like my heart fell to the bottom of my stomach and yeah. it was boiling itself in tears. <laughs> and I just couldn't, I couldn't get out of that feeling. I'm like, damn, my kid's going to feel that one day. I know. And like, how do I even tell them? Because somebody asked me, well, how did you get over it? I'm like, it just took time. I know. And that's it. There's there's nothing else for it. It just takes time. Yeah. And that's the thing too. It's fucked up because like, I mean, I love having a baby girl, but like, man, men ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm looking back like, okay, I've never actually like had my, I've never actually been like dumped. You know what I'm saying? Like I've had a, like a tough breakup and I remember feeling really sad about it and like, <laughs> All right. And feeling like nobody s- can relate, Tim. <laughs> nobody cares about this part of the podcast. <laughs> you fucking, this guy. Let me tell you something. I don't know what it's like not to be wanted. All right. But for those of you out there who do feel that way, tough news. I've only had like two and a half relationships, dog. Yeah, whatever. So everything- All right. <laughs> well, for those of you out there who knows what it's like to be a loser like me, <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> but I have been sad over many a women's. And um, I just want to, what were we talking about? He didn't think it's Ritalin today. <laughs> <laughs> I just, oh, yes. I know that, you know, uh, she's going to be like in fucking eighth grade and some boy is going to take some other girl to a party or some shit. And she's going to be like completely heartbroken, you know, because I remember, I remember like, people going through that and I'm and it's gonna be <laughs> he can't even say himself <laughs> he just goes I remember other people feeling that stuff well it's gonna be hard to be like baby this is stupid <laughs> <laughs> like do you know what it's like to get your heart broken dad it's like go, go talk to Uncle David he's a loser <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I got a lot of stories about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, that might be helpful, actually. You know? <laughs> this is the one that's been dumped. <laughs> Daddy was never dumped ever. I'll just, I'll pretend. I'll pretend like I, I know what I'm talking I like, about. Oh, baby, I know what that, you know, sometimes when you just, you know, you just, you know, I just, um, you know, like when, man, I, I don't know. All right. That is cool. <laughs> all right. <laughs> You go to whack ass David <laughs> for these stupid ass whack questions. <laughs> like, baby, baby, can we just go get some food? <laughs> what you trying to talk to me about this bullshit for? <laughs> I can't relate. <laughs> I can't relate. You know, your feelings don't matter yet. <laughs> You're a kid. Nah, but you know, I, I want to, I want to make sure that we can talk about all the things. I'm pretty sure that you're going to be pretty open with your kids, man. Yeah. I feel like they're going to talk to you about fucking goddamn everything to the point where you're like, I don't want to hear this. <laughs> I, I, yeah, and that's the thing too. I also want to make sure I'm not one of these parents that's like, yeah, yeah, whatever, and zone out. You know what I'm saying? Even now, I, I try to be very conscious of not being on my phone too much, you know? Because sometimes you feel like, oh, okay, yeah, she's watching fucking Coco Melon and they're not rhyming. It's like, cool, let me just get on my phone a little bit while she zones out. But then sometimes I realize, oh, wait, she's looking at me to see if I'm, like, seeing what she's seeing. I'm like, okay, let me tuck this away, you know? Because I, I want to make sure and be present. I want to ask you this. Yeah. Would you rather your kid be a super popular cool kid or a nerd? I don't know if... It's like a rather if I like you mean if I, I, mean, had, I guess you could kind of be both nowadays. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I don't know if those categories actually like exist anymore, right? Because well, I see it like so. For <clears throat> example, I have a I have a neighbor, and then his daughter's in college or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But she's like a physicist, mm-hmm. and she's very very pretty. Yeah, but she dressed like literally a sitcom physicist would dress like. Ah, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah, the yeah. glasses, the frizzy hair, whatever. <laughs> and one day I was like, she's like, I think she's like in her mid twenties. I'm like, she's actually from a from an just being objectively speaking, she's actually has a package to be traditionally very beautiful. Oh, she's that like character in the movie where they're like, we're going to give her a makeover. She takes off her glasses and they're like, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things because me and Meryl were walking by and I, we were looking at her. I was like, and I looked back at her. She looked at me. I was like, you're thinking the same thing right there. She's actually really beautiful. Yeah. But it's the stuff that she doesn't invest into. She doesn't care. Right. You know, her brain is she, elsewhere. Her brain is in books and like with the things that are in. She's super fucking sweet and she doesn't have any of it. But then our other neighbor, uh, there's a daughter around the same age. Mid to, I'm not acting like she's like hell young, but she's like in their mid 20s. Like they're past college working or whatever. But 
you, she's like the popular girl, yeah. right? So friends that come over, it's the girls that are all done up, ready yeah. to go party or whatever. And the other girl is so different. I'm like, which which daughter would I want to have here? Uh, you know, I mean, if it's a question of of one or the other, it's a little difficult, right? I feel like everything has its pros and cons. Um, and again, okay, this is going to sound <laughs> like, so I think, it's you know, for me, I was a really popular kid, but also <laughs> I was popular, but also <laughs> I was like, I was well adjusted. I got <laughs> like I did pretty well in school. <laughs> so I think it doesn't it doesn't have to be an issue of of this or that. It's both both are possible at the same time. <laughs> like it's it's possible to be both. <laughs> so but if it's an issue of the either or I hate like, these unrelated podcasts. <laughs> Like, so for example, I have a friend. Look at this astrophysicist <laughs> with a huge dick. Oh my god! <laughs> all right, let's just, like let's talk about my two two different friends I know. All right, <laughs> I <laughs> like I have a home girl. Uh, I have a home girl who um, was very got amazing grades. She's a doctor now. She's actually Chia's fucking um, OBGYN now. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and she was always super smart in high school, but she was also very pretty, but wasn't necessarily a quote unquote popular girl, but was always very pretty. She didn't flaunt her shit like that. She didn't flaunt her shit, but she was like, you know, also like very awkward, like what you would call um, character wise, like I guess like a nerd. OK, um, but she was got amazing grades. Now she's a fucking doctor. You know what I'm saying? In college, of course, you kind of find your own group. She was like had her fun, was always like a beautiful girl. Right. And so I feel like in my, and she found her, her group of friends in high school too. It wasn't like, oh, the popular crowd, but she had her fun in high school. She had her fun in college. She became a doctor. She's successful now, right? Yes. Um, and then I look back on this guy, um, this, this, like this guy who was like the AC Slater of my high school, this, this Samoan dude named Sonny, right? Who's super popular, super attractive, had fucking six pack when we were, you know, all like 16, right? And I have no idea what he's up to now. I, I have no idea. I don't, I'm not friends with him on Facebook or anything, but who knows what he's up to. Um, it's like, and I know a lot of people that went through a tough time in high school. Let's say they got picked on or whatever. And it, it is kind of like a traumatic experience. You know what I'm saying? You, you get a little. You don't want your kid to feel that. I shit. don't want my kid to, I don't want my kid to be a picked on kid, you know? Um, so of course in my head, sometimes I'm like, you know, Veda's such a cute baby. I'm always like, oh my gosh, she's going to be so pretty. But I'm, I always, I tell her, even now, I'm like, baby girl, you're so beautiful. But remember, you're more than that, okay? You're so much more than your looks. You're so fucking funny. You're super intelligent. You're going to be, oh, people are going to love you. Uh, but, and I try to instill in her now, even though she doesn't understand. I'm like, hey, look, man, I know you're super pretty, but it's, 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 it's about more than that, you know? Because I feel like what happens in those years when you're super hot, you kind of... Um, you think that's your identity if yeah, you're the yeah, hot yeah, yeah. person, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's where hot people get fucked up later on in life because they learn to feel that like that's all they need, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, luckily for me, I was super hot and super popular and super talented. So uh, so I, how about you? What, okay, what was your high school experience? I was a nerd. Were you though? No. Um, I think I was just always in my own world. Uh -huh. So I flipped between a lot of different groups. So Same. I was like a fucking leaf in the wind, right? Uh -huh. But I wasn't very popular or never, I don't, I definitely wasn't popular. You know okay. what I mean? I didn't have the looks. I didn't have the bravado. I didn't have any of that type of shit. No but Riz? I, I had a little Riz. <laughs> I had a little Riz, no cap. <laughs> 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 no, 
no cap, your boy had a little riz. <laughs> but that was so later on. So like uh, junior year to senior year is when I started coming into my own. Mm. Where I was just like, you know what? Fuck all this shit, mm-hmm. dude. Mm-hmm. Just if people don't like you, they don't fucking like you. Do what you want to do and just enjoy fucking life, right? Yeah, yeah. And not obviously to the max, but that's like the onslaught of it where I just wanted to join choir. So I fucking joined choir, right? Right. Um, I be, you know, was playing music. I was singing. I was doing all these things that I wanted to do, mm-hmm. but <clears throat> definitely wasn't popular with the ladies. Mm. But I will say this, though. There's some girls that like me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and I feel like even some people don't have that experience where, right. you know, I'll talk to, or you'll read comments. They're like, well, you know, at least girls liked you in high school. I was like, oh, shit. I, I didn't really think about that, mm-hmm. right? Where there's guys who have gone throughout high school and they've never had a love confession said to them. Mm. Right? Where they're like, I have a crush on you. They never sent like little cute notes to each other. Yeah. And I had that whole experience. Obviously mm. not to the extent of like some of the really popular or traditionally hot dudes, but I had, you know, a little bit of the riz, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like my high school experience was just me trying to figure out what where the fuck I wanted to be uh-huh. because there's a group of people I grew up with that were you know, they didn't turn out that great, mm-hmm. you know, and I was not like them, but I wanted to be like them because honestly, when you grow up in a bad area, you want to be next to the bad people because you feel a little protected. Mm. But at the same time, I've talked about this too, where I feel that the people that were quote unquote protected me were the meanest to me. Mm. They would fuck, fuck around with me the most. Mm. So I'm like, maybe I should just get beat up because <laughs> y'all are fucking mean. And then I hung out with these other people in high school who were just like, geeky and nerdy uh, and I felt more comfortable with them right because I could just be myself I mean look man and that, and that's the thing too I think it's really important to be able to be yourself right which is what I really like about what I feel the new generation of kids is doing yeah it's less of a like jocks versus nerds thing it's a very like you know and, and granted of course I don't know what it's like in high school right maybe maybe the, the, it is very clicky they say still. It's, the, it's it's the uh internet clout that makes you popular. Now. Ah, yes. Isn't that wild? Yeah. So they don't care about the jock shit, whatever. It's about who has followers? the most followers. Yeah. Ah, fuck. What a crazy time. <laughs> yeah. I remember one of the beautiful things about my high school is that like all the athletic teams were trash. So the jocks weren't the popular ones. You feel me? Like it wasn't jocks versus nerds versus whatever, whatever. Yeah, our school didn't have that jock hotness. Yeah. <clears throat> me either. Isn't that great? It was actually the thugs. <laughs> oh God. Well, yeah, there's that too. But like, and, and thank God, you know, I was able to fucking be a theater kid and still be quote unquote popular, you know, because like, you know, that is a very, you know, stereotypically like, oh, that's some nerdy shit. I right? wanted to join theater. I was just scared. Of getting made fun of? Yeah. 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 Uh, luckily for me, I was hilarious on stage. So, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> mm. High school must have been great for you. It was great. I loved it. I was prom king, by the way. <laughs> I was a uh, winter homecoming king. Really? Yeah. Cool. Look at you. You were popular. I felt it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I felt they were pranking me. <laughs> I, will, I will say this, though. I <laughs> didn't really care about dances like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and when I found out I was winter homecoming, I was shocked, right? Mm. But it coincided with during the time that I was more comfortable with myself, uh-huh. more jokes. I was doing music. I was singing all this other stuff. Yeah. And I became Winter Homecoming King uh, during my senior year. And then I remember there's one game. Winter dude. Formal. Well, yeah. I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember anymore. So many years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't cool. I deleted it out of my head. Okay. <laughs> but there was one guy named David as well. Okay. Flaming gay dude, uh-huh. super dope. He was all a part of you know the school staff thing where they make all the events and stuff. ASB. ASB. Yes. Uh-huh. This was his last year to be king prom whatever, mm. right? And he felt in his bones that he was going to get it. And I'm just sitting there. And I remember I was wearing like this old Navy t-shirt, just chilling, <laughs> not giving a fuck. <laughs> and then all my friends were like, hey, you got to attend this little assembly, yeah. right? And I didn't know why because I never attended assemblies. I just always did school. So I was sitting there and they're like, you're the winner homecoming king. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I went up there. I just got my shit. I was like, that's cool. And I just hear in the back, David go, fuck. And he runs out and just storms out. What? Yeah. He wow. was pissed. And I, I remember afterwards, like, bro, you could be it. I don't give yeah, a you fuck. Don't care. It doesn't fucking matter. I wasn't picked. Yeah. And he was mad at me. Wow. And he got even more mad because I didn't go. You didn't even go? No. I, I, tr- I couldn't go. My parents wouldn't let me. Oh. Because I, I fucked up all my grades. So uh, I wasn't going anywhere. There was a guy at my school. <laughs> this guy named Edgar. Huge head. Even bigger than mine. Huge fucking, he had like a hexagon head. This guy, Edgar, ran 
every for every dance he was on every fucking court never won finally like i think it might have been either homecoming or winter formal he won and everyone felt like he won out of pity and because like there was people were upset they were like demanding recounts and shit <laughs> <laughs> they felt like they gave it to him just you out of pity. Big head? <laughs> big head, Edgar? Big Hedger? <laughs> <laughs> Edgar? That'd be fucked up, dude. Oh, real quick tangent. Speaking of funny nicknames, there was one one of the Cholos at our school. Um, you know, all the Cholos would say, shave their head, of course, right? But there's <laughs> there was one dude who had a very like fleshy head, right? Oh, that's like a thing where they have like the cre- the, the like craters. crevices. Yeah. yeah, craters and crevices in his head, but he shaved it. So it looked like, you know, he had hair in between, yeah. but it was just his the fucking folds of his head, like, folding in so it was darker. But all his cholo homies called him cornrows <laughs> because of the way his head looked. Like, hey, cornrows, what you getting for lunch? Cornrows. <laughs> Mexican people are so good at nicknames, dude. That's like their shit, man. I know. That, I know. That stuck with him for life. Cornrows. Yeah, there was another kid like that, too. Yeah, Maybe, I don't know if it's like a... The name is uh, Geraldo, mm. and he had that shit too on his head. But nobody said anything to him because he was gigantic. Mm. You get fucked up. He and I actually got into a fist fight in uh, eighth grade because we were the biggest kids in school. Mm. I don't know what the fuck happened, but it was literally at the end of school. I don't know what happened, but he smushed my face <laughs> real fast as a joke, yeah. and it was just on, just fucking swinging on each other. Damn. It probably sounds a lot cooler because if you had video back in the day, it was probably like this ah. with, my, with my wrist all curled back and shit. But we just started swinging on each other. Or maybe it was like the last episode of Game of Thrones where the fucking mountain was fighting against um, the hound. <laughs> well, that would have been really fucking cool. But we just started swinging on each other, just binking each other in the face. Yeah. And next thing you know, the next day we became friends. Aww. How weird. Then back you- in the day it was different. Um, people still do that. Do they? Yeah, swing on each other and then you're like, hey man, good, good punch. Good yeah, point, we just kind of like dapped it up, whatever. Yeah. And after that, we were just really cool. And I thought that was a really cool thing. And uh, you know what I'm saying? Going into 2023, guys, I think it's uh, it's beautiful. You got to be able to uh, resolve your conflicts and just move on with life because uh, there's so much more ahead and there's so much more that matters. And uh, you got to stop tripping over the trivial things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. You know, things that Tim has never experienced that he knows nothing about, like pain and crying. I I cried Watching uh, what's that movie? Coco. Um, I cried. He cried when he found out he was homecoming king. <laughs> Prom king. <sighs> <laughs> well, guys, we'll see you on another episode of Dudes Behind the Foods. Hope you have a very blessed year and let's get our goals. Pop it Let's fucking not. do this shit. Look, you got this. You can do this, okay? You don't even need to wait for another year. Every day is a new beginning. You got this if you just put your mind to it and fucking focus on this shit, all right? Palabra. Palabra, fool. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. We're fucking dudes behind the foods. I'm Tim Chantaronsu. And I'm David Sopero. Peace out, bitch. Yo, it's the dudes behind the foods. 